god. <laughs> I'm so grateful for all of the women who keep fighting here in Mexico and all across the world for a world and a future in which we don't have to suffer because we are women. No woman can be free if not all of us are liberated. That's a sense that I felt very, very deeply. I don't really know how to start this video because I'm already so emotional, but um, today is March 8th, which is International Women's Day or Feminist Fight Day, as it has been reclaimed in recent years. And I'm currently in Mexico City for a month. And today I will be joining the feminist marches that have been happening here every year. The reason why this is so different and intense for me right now is because here in Mexico and all over Latin America, women are not just protesting their rights, but they are protesting their lives. Here in Mexico, women are being murdered every day. Women are being kidnapped. Um, there's a really unimaginable suffering and pain that is still directed towards women every day in this country. And um, I, I mean, most of you know this, but I'm Mexican as well. I grew up in Germany. I grew up incredibly privileged, but I still feel a very, very deep connection to my country and to my people here. And being able to experience this today is really wonderful, but also very terrifying because mm, these protests are so different from every kind of protest I've ever attended because the police are very, very reckless and violent towards the women who are protesting. There's a lot of vandalism happening from the Bloque Negro, which is the radical groups of feminists. And m many of them are actually um, victims of domestic, domestic abuse, domestic violence, sexual violence, and they are fighting for their own life and to protect our lives of every woman who is in Mexico. So yeah, it's it's very, very sad. Um, you know, International Women's Day, especially in Germany or in like Western countries, it's like a, cel a celebration for womanhood and stuff like that. But here it's really a day of grievance because thousands of women are being killed every year just due to their gender so it's almost 12 and i'm gonna get ready now and go to a good friend of mine's house her little sister is here she's also mexican german like me and um she's a good friend and i'm gonna go with her little sister and their friends because um it's quite dangerous to go alone the reason why i wanted to make this video is because this is a topic that's very important to me personally um but also it's something that isn't really talked about a lot in Europe or in Western countries in general. Yes, a lot of us have heard the term femicide in feminist discussions, but um, maybe through seeing it through my eyes, it can be something that um, you understand on a deeper level or that feels, I guess, closer to you because even for me, while I have a very deep connection with Mexico and I'm here at least three months a year and I speak the language I grew up here partly or I grew up very very heavily with Mexican culture it's still hard to grasp the gravity of topics like this when you're so far away and when you live a life that's so full of privilege um yeah and th these are all just things that I'm thinking about today and I want to kind of you know do my part in this by being there, but also by sharing it with people um, who maybe don't know a lot about this, so yeah. Right now I'm gonna pack my stuff and what I will need will be sunscreen, some snacks, water, some cash if something happens with the police and obviously ID, um, yeah.
started preparing ourselves for the protest. We draw a lot of posters with different writings on it. Some people even made a few little drawings. Um, all of us put our name, emergency contact and blood type on our arms in case any of us faint or something happens to us. Um, this is something that I haven't really experienced at protests in Europe. My friend's sister was preparing the solution in case that tear gas gets used, which in the end it did. Arriving on site, I felt completely overwhelmed by the joy, power and number of these women. I have never seen anything like this in my entire life. It was thousands of thousands of thousands of women. You couldn't see the end, you couldn't see the beginning. I was checking my phone and there were um, like news popping up that Sokalo, which was more than two kilometers away, was already filling up with people. first educating myself on this topic I felt a bit uncomfortable with the idea of this radical feminist block but this comes from again a very privileged Western perspective where it took me a while to understand that these women are destroying monuments and painting things and acting quite violent towards a system that they are fighting and their main argument is that a woman's life is worth more than a monument and because in current Mexican society a woman's life is not worth more than a monument that's why they have to destroy these monuments. We are very far away from El Bloque Negro so our part of the protest was very peaceful. We were loud and emotional, we were shouting and I felt so powerful in this collective of women who are literally protesting their right to live, to stay alive, to not die, to not be kidnapped, to not be taken. I don't think I've ever been more proud to be Mexican and I don't think I've ever been more proud to be Latina. I'm so grateful for all of the women who keep fighting here in Mexico and all across the world for a world and a future in which we don't have to suffer because we are women. Hello friends, it's the next day and I thought I would do a little recap of how I'm feeling, what my thoughts have been since yesterday and to be honest, this experience has been so important to me, so meaningful but also formative in a way. I think my biggest takeaway was that we as white feminists need to think more critically, we have to include other women in our discourses, we have to include other women's stories and voices because no woman can be free if not all of us are liberated. That's a sense that I felt very very deeply as a very privileged person um, who doesn't live in Mexico, who you know is white and all of these other things. Mm, it's kind of like we have to work harder and I cannot be free and I cannot 
uh, enjoy my privileges mindlessly if I'm not thinking and engaging supporting causes um, by feminists around the world and also at the same time something that I wasn't thinking about yesterday but today was the fact that you know the feminist movement globally is so large it's huge right now we have Afghan women's fight for their right to life, liberty, justice, everything. We have Iranian women who are fighting. We have Ukrainian women who are fighting against atrocities of war. And these are just like three topics or groups of women who are a bit more present in Western media. But apart from these three, you know, there's women in Latin America, there's women in Asia, there's women in America. Okay, I mean, that's actually a topic that does get discussed quite a bit. But what I'm trying to say is that it can get exhausting and overwhelming. It's like you are one singular person and you cannot, you know, be educated on every feminist issue on the planet. You cannot advocate for everything. It's impossible. And it's important that we as women also understand um, to take our breaks, to guard our energy so that we then have energy to fight. And I, I personally think it's wonderful that I, for example, as a Mexican German, I can be here and I can tell you all about this cause. I can educate you, but it's impossible. I'm not gonna start, you know, um, making weekly videos about this week we're talking about Afghan women, this week we're talking about this and this and that, because I believe that a story is more impactful if it's personal and um, I think there are so many incredible women out there who are advocating for global intersectional feminist issues um, and it's just I think each and every one of us has to find their own cause or their own way of approaching feminism in a way it also doesn't have to be very loud it can be a more silent kind of activism um, but yeah I think that's just something that I always knew but couldn't really grasp because I felt so overwhelmed by everything and because this is so close to my heart um, it makes more sense to talk about I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you food for thought and, I don't know, made you realize a lot of things that maybe you didn't know or weren't exactly educated about. So, 